Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we're going to be converting between units of weight. We are in our math journals, volume 2, on pages 204 and 205. So let's take a look at the top of page 204. And as you can see, the units of weight that we're going to be converting between are the American style of ounces, pounds, and tons. Now if we were living in any other country in the world, uh, say uh, France or Finland, uh, Greece or Greenland, uh, we would be using the metric system, okay? Kilograms and grams, but here in the States, we still use ounces, pounds, and tons. Now, ounces are our smallest unit of weight. We would measure something like a pencil or a pad of post-its with ounces, but when we get into larger items, like say a textbook or how big your new puppy is, uh, we're going to be thinking about pounds, okay? So for every one pound, that's the equivalent of 16 ounces. Then when we venture into tons, we're talking about something that weighs a lot, like a car or a giant boulder that fell off of a mountain, okay? When we want to say that we have a lot of something, like I have a ton of homework, we use the word ton to describe a lot. So there are a lot of pounds in a ton, namely 2,000. So if you take a look at these first four problems on page 204, we're basically just converting in between units, okay? So in number one, if one ton is equivalent of 2,000 pounds, I can find the, uh, the number of pounds in three tons by just multiplying three times 2,000. Well, three times two, of course, is six. And since I have three zeros behind my two here, my answer in pounds would be not six, but 6,000. Same would be true for 14 tons. If I have 14 tons, and I multiply it by 2,000, or 2 with 3 zeros behind it, 1, 2, 3, all I have to do is multiply 14 times 2, and then add 3 zeros to the end. Well, 10 times 2 is 20, 4 times 2 is 8, 20 plus 8 is 28, so my total would be 28 thousand pounds for 14 tons. Now when we get to pounds versus ounces, we're going to be multiplying by 16. Now I'm sure that not everyone here can uh, skip count by 16s quite yet, so it's helpful if we use this number line here at the top. Okay, so for example, 3 pounds is the equivalent of 48 ounces, so that's just a matter of just looking at the table. However, when we get beyond what the table tells us, which is the equivalent of 10 pounds, then it gets a little trickier. Okay? So for example, 12 pounds, how many ounces is that? Well, I would want to multiply 12 times 16. Okay? And the way I can do that is just use a little bit of uh, partial products right here. So 12 times 16 is the same as saying 10 times 10 and 10 times 6, 2 times 10, and 2 times 6, okay? So I'm now just going to solve all four of those little multiplication problems. Well, 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 6 is 60, 2 times 10 is 20, and 2 times 6 is 12. If I add all those four partial products together, I'm going to get a total of 192. 192 which tracks because that's bigger than the number here in ounces, that's 144. So my conversion here from pounds to ounces is going to be smaller than 12, okay? And that's the reason why uh, in the middle of a unit that's primarily dedicated towards division that we are taking a, a minute to think about units of weight. Sometimes we have to group smaller units into larger units, like how many pounds is the equivalent of 144 ounces? Well, if the conversion rate is between pounds and ounces, okay, and if I have to multiply my pounds by 16 to figure out my number of ounces, I would then have to reverse that to figure out the number of pounds. So basically, I would be dividing 144 by 16. Ooh! A two-digit divisor. Well, friends, that's not as scary as, it, as you think it might be. So I have a three-digit number here, and I have a two-digit divisor. So my first question is, can I get uh, 100 groups of 16 
out of 144, okay? So if I divide 144 into 16 piles, will I have enough to put 100 in each group? Well, no, because 1 is smaller than 16, okay? So 0 times 16 is 0. I'm going to subtract the difference. I'm going to bring down my next digit, which is 4, and then I ask myself the same question. Do I have enough... Uh, groups of 10 to get uh, 16 groups of 10 in each group. I don't because 10 groups of 16 is 160 or 16 groups of 10. So again, I don't have enough because 0 times 16 is 0. 1 times 16 is 16, which is bigger than 14. So again, I'm going to subtract. So now I have to ask myself, can I get 16 groups out of 144? Well, the answer is yes. So the real question is, by how much? So again, I need to think about how many groups of 16 can I get out of 144? Well, it just so happens that up here in my table, I have that answer laid out for me. It's 9, okay? 9 groups of 16 is 144, because 9 times 16 is 144. I'm going to subtract the difference, okay? Now, if I wanted to check my work, I could take 16 and multiply it by 9 to see if that gives me the correct product, okay? 16 times 9 is the same as saying 6 times 9 and 10 times 9. I said that backwards, but that's okay. 10 times 9 is 90. 6 times 9 is 54. And yes, that gives us 144. So we are going to be applying some division concepts to this activity, okay? When we convert between ounces and pounds and pounds and tons. If we have the smaller unit and we're trying to group them into larger units, that's when we start to use division. Okay, now let's take a look at this set of story problems that's going to ask us to convert some measurements. Let's take a look at problem number five. A Compsognathus dinosaur weighs approximately eight pounds. An Archaeopteryx, did I say that right? Google, how do I say this word? Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx. Oh, I was pretty close. Okay, so a Compsognathus dinosaur, it weighs approximately eight pounds. Uh, Archaeopteryx. Dinosaur weighs approximately two pounds. About how many more ounces did a comp so Nathus weigh than a Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx. That's a tough one. Uh, well, you know what they're doing here? They are asking you to convert your answer into ounces, not pounds. They asked the question in pounds, but then they want the answer in ounces. And of course, when it says about how many more, you know we are subtracting. So the first thing I would do is subtract the number of pounds. 8 minus 2. That's kindergarten stuff, Mr. Wasman. 8 minus 2 is going to give me 6. Okay. So now what I have to do is I have to multiply 6 times 16, the number of ounces per pound. So 6 times 16. Well, again, I can just look at my table, which is conveniently located on the previous page, and 6 times 16 gives me 96. Okay? So 6 groups of 16 ounces would be 96 ounces. Okay? Now let's say I didn't have that handy table right there, and I was just asked to solve this problem. And if I knew that there are 16 ounces for every pound, I could just create a multiplication problem. 16 times 6. Well, I can use, let's use uh, partitioning rectangles this time. 16 is 10, and 6 ones. If I multiply each group by 6, 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 6 is 36. Add those two together. I'm going to get, oh, 96. Okay, so my answer is correct. And that's all we're doing here is we're just thinking about uh, units of weight 
these units of measurement uh, as our uh, units, what the numbers represent. Every time we have a, a problem in math, the numbers are symbolically representing an amount of something, whether that be money or uh, inches or jelly beans, or whatever it is that you're counting. Here we're just counting ounces, pounds, and tons. Okay? So try these problems on your own. Okay? Fill out the rest of those tables on page 204. Use the uh, number lines on top of page 204 to help you. And again, over here in the upper right hand corner, they usually, not always, but usually, will give you the pages in your student reference book that you can go to uh, for more uh, help to refer to if you still have questions. But even after you uh, consult your SRB, if you still have questions, then um, as I often suggest at the end of my videos, you should be talking to your math teacher. Okay, Whether you're watching this from home as a homework assignment or this is a part of your virtual experience or uh, you just have this on in class, um, however you need to get a hold of your math teacher when you have questions, you need to ask. I hope that this video was helpful to you. Um, until we speak again, friends, have a good day and good luck. Thanks.